So among the almost 900 Pokemon designs, there are many bad ones, many many average slash mediocre ones, and many good ones as well. But I've already went over my most hated ones, and there are way too many fucking average ones to count. So that's why in this video, I'll be informing you about not one, not three, but two of my favorite designs from every generation. And I'll be referring to generations as gens from now on. Also, no Mega Evolutions and no Rayquaza because I already have an entire video about why he's my favorite Pokemon in like every way. Alright, now we can begin. In Gen 1, my two favorite Pokemon designs are Mewtwo and Vaporeon. So let's talk about Mewtwo first, and as I said in the last video, there's a spectrum when it comes to Pokemon design for me. On the left side of the spectrum, we have Pokemon that look too simple to the point where they just look like creatures. And I'm looking at you, dipshit. Sorry, these are fictional creatures, there was no point in saying that. The right side of the spectrum is Pokemon that just obviously look like things from our world, like Vanillite or the trash bag Pokemon. And in the middle, we have Pokemon that are basically perfect. These Pokemon, like Bulbasaur for example, look like objects and creatures from our world, but they look like they can fit in the Pokemon world too. They're also not too simple to the point where you're questioning what they are. I'd say Mewtwo is a little bit to the left of this spectrum, and I don't mean like far left, I mean like just a little bit off center. And just a heads up, most of the Pokemon that I mentioned in this video are in this perfect category, so yeah. But onto the fine details of Mewtwo's design, it's pretty amazing. Mewtwo is literally the genetic experiment Pokemon, and they nailed that aesthetic down greatly. First of all, he's bipedal, which not only nails down the genetic experiment aesthetic, but for some reason, all Pokemon that are bipedal get an extra two coolness points in my book. Second of all, he has a weird tube on his head, which not to be offensive, but again, it nails down the genetic experiment aesthetic. And C, he's usually angry looking or always stoic, which kinda reinforces the genetic blah 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 blah, but it also reminds you that Mewtwo is a heartless, soulless being that was only made for battle. Despite what the anime tells you, blah 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 blah. Now Vaporeon, like many other Gen 1 Pokemon, are perfect, they're right in the middle, but the difference is, Vaporeon is probably smack dab in the middle. Like I said before, it's not too simple, but it's also not a creature that just looks like something from our world. It's also probably like top 3 evolution designs, but that doesn't really matter, so let's just move on to Gen 2. Now in the last video, I said I didn't like Gen 2's overall design, but that was just the first half. The second half is amazing. And the two designs that I think are the best from that second half are Suicune and Lugia. First off, the way Suicune looks is just so intimidating yet majestic. But also to keep this Pokemon from looking bland and boring, it has these two ribbons coming out of its ass, which is pretty weird at first, but now I think it's pretty alright. Pause. I like Lugia for some of the same reasons that I do Suicune, he's just so badass and to keep him from looking like a generic dragon, they gave him these little hand thingies which is pretty awesome and they also made him extremely white. So yeah, these two Pokemon are extremely awesome and that's why they're my two favorite designs in Gen 2. Moving into Gen 3, we have Blaziken and Deoxys. Now I love the Torchic line because I enjoy the concept of seeing this little hatchling that you picked at the beginning of the game turn into a badass fighting chicken by the end of the game, and the design conveys this perfectly. Blaziken is also a prime example of what a starter should look like by endgame. By the end of the game, or around the 5th to 7th gym, your starter should look like a fully maxed out battle hardened creature while still resembling the fledgling thing that you picked at the beginning of the game. Also, ever since I was like 12, I thought he looked like Hulk Hogan, and I don't know if that was intended, but it's pretty awesome. Deoxys, like a lot of the Pokemon that I mentioned before, is pretty intimidating. And to be clear, we're only talking about the base form. I think this right here is just the best pose I've ever seen anything do. Ever. But not only is Deoxys extremely intimidating, he's also a great example of how to do an alien Pokemon right. In my opinion, most of the Pokemon from Ultra Space are not how you do a space Pokemon. Yeah, the Pokemon from Ultra Space look bizarre and inhuman, and if an alien landed on Earth right now, they would probably look bizarre and inhuman. But that whole unearthly aesthetic is ruined by the fact that they look like household items. And if an alien came down to Earth right now, would he look like my gamer chair or a shape-shifting being that has DNA for arms? And I think we all know which one it would be. The gamer chair. 
Also, honorable mention to Zangoose because he looks like he was raised in a crack den all of his life. Getting into Gen 4, we have Glaceon and Lucario. I like Glaceon for the same reasons that I like Vaporeon. It's a simple design that's not too simple, blah blah blah, yeah. But I actually think Glaceon does this better than Vaporeon, and it's probably my favorite evolution design. But Lucario though, is an entirely different beast! First of all, he's bipedal, which I already mentioned gives you two extra cool points. Second of all, he's blue, which you can't go wrong with because blue is literally the most light color on the planet. And adding black? Oh my god, you can't literally go wrong with black. It makes everything cooler. Oh. Oh, whoops. This combination of a faded blue and black makes one of the best color schemes a Pokemon has ever had. And the weird dreadlock thingies are actually a nice touch. For Generation 5, I have Ridiculous and Bisharp, and I'm gonna start with Bisharp because I like him for a lot of the same reasons that I like Lucario. First of all, he's bipedal, which obviously makes him the coolest Pokemon. Bisharp's design is really menacing, and it makes him look like a cool soldier. Like if there was a Pokemon war in the medieval times, he would be there. That's what that's what his design says to me. Also, I like how if you hug this thing, you would die instantly, but moving on. I like Ridiculous for the simple fact that he just looks like a psychic fetus. Alright, that's not the only reason I like the design. I also like it because it's another it's another version of the perfect Pokemon that we see in the middle. It doesn't really resemble anything from our world apart from a fetus, I guess. But it also isn't too simple to where it just looks really dumb. It, it's like, it looks like a Pokemon. It, it just looks like a Pokemon. And there are a few other designs like this, such as Gengar, like what the hell is a Gengar? That's not anything from our world, besides like a beanbag, I guess. But yeah, that's all I have to say for Gen 5, and on to Gen 6. My favorite Pokemon designs in Gen 6 are Dedene and Greninja. First of all, Dedene is the cutest Pokemon on the planet ever. Yeah, that's good grammar. Also, it makes more Pico look like a fucking rat! In my opinion, Greninja was the last really good starter design, and at the time, I think it was the best one since Empeleon in Gen 4, or Empoleon, sorry. His design is just so badass, and one of the coolest and most clever things about it is the tongue. Without it, he would still look kinda cool, but he would be missing the thing that makes him look so awesome. Lucky number 7. In Gen 7, we have Melameta and Buzzwool. Buzzwool, I, I think that's how you say it. And I like them for reasons that you may not think of. Starting with Mellow Metal, I, I just really like this thing's texture. It looks so soft and it, it just looks so cool and it's unlike any Pokemon I've ever seen. I like how bulky it looks as well and why does it look like the type of person to say this? Sorry bro, I almost forgot. Alright, good night bro. Alright, for Buzzwool, to be honest with you, not to be weird, but I just like its bulky physique. I don't know if this was intended, but he just looks like a mosquito that sucked up too much blood. And if that mosquito could allocate all the blood to like certain parts of his body, and that's just so hilarious to me. His design just looks so goofy as well, and the only issue with it is, it has four legs instead of two. And I would much prefer if this thing just had Mr. Krabs legs instead. My two favorite designs in Generation 8 are Corbinite and Glastrish- Gra I don't know how to say that. But I'll say it was definitely difficult to find a really good design besides Corbinite. I basically didn't even talk about this in the last video, so I'll just say it now. I really, really don't like a lot of the designs in Gen 8, and that's for two reasons. Bringing up the Spectrum again, I believe most of the Pokemon in this game fall under the far right category, but even if we aren't looking at most of the Pokemon in this game, we still have shit like Stonejourner, who's literally just a formation of rocks. And then we have you, you piece of fucking lettuce. What are you? What are you besides literal just nostalgia baiting? I also have major problems with the starters, but that's a whole nother topic for a whole different video. But getting into the actual designs, we have Corviknight, and I think this is the best looking design in Gen 8. I also think that this is the coolest beginner flying type in the series. Now when you play a new Pokemon game for the first time, the first Pokemon that you're gonna get is either the beginning normal type, the beginning bug type, or the beginning flying type. Now usually beginner Pokemon players will keep their first Pokemon that they actually caught until the end of the game. Well that's what I did and that's what I still do today. So just like your starter, it's cool to see this random Pokemon that you found on the side of the road turn into this badass by the end of the game. 
It also gives you a sense of accomplishment, and Corviknight's design portrays this perfectly. At the beginning of the game, he's just some random low-level bird that you find, but by the end of the game, he's this awesome black knight. Glastrier's, yes I found out how to say it, design is really just average to me. That's the only reason why he's here. He's the only above average Pokemon in the game, and that's really not saying anything when your competition is the rest of Gen 8 besides Corviknight. The only thing I really like about this Pokemon is the hooves and the face. For some reason, ever since I played Ultra Sun, I found it satisfying the first time I rode the mud sail and his hooves were just stomping on the ground so aggressively. And it's because of that reason that I imagine this Pokemon doing the same thing and it being also really satisfying. And yeah, that's quite literally it. There's just nothing else I like about it. Alright guys, that was my highly opinionated list of the two best Pokemon designs from every generation. Be sure to go check out my worst Pokemon designs video and be sure to like, comment, and maybe even subscribe.